Yeah, shalom, shalom. It's your brother Makazah. You already know what this is. This is TOZ, Trumpets of Zion. I want to give all praises to the Most High through His Son, calling you Negroes scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Back to our God, the God of Israel. Okay, we are the true Israelites of the Bible, also calling any Gentiles as well that have left this world and want to serve our God as well. This is, uh, you know, welcome. All right, so uh, this lesson I wanted to touch into because, you know, it's still running rampant that, you know, the full moon is the new moon. And, you know, I just wanted to yeah, smash it. You know, I, um, you know, I know some brothers have, have done lessons in the past, um, you know, but I don't know if everyone has brought out the same information. Uh, so, you know, I just wanted to jab at it. Um, so, you know, I, I know a lot of people, you know, they use this scripture or, you know, you know, mainly you see, see IUIC, um, but I've seen some other people as well uh, teaching this, uh, that the full moon is the new moon. And, you know, what I'm going to go into, you can't really get around it. Okay. If you, if, especially if you're an Israelite and you, you use history from our forefathers, you have to go by that. Even, even in the scriptures, I'm going to show in the scriptures as well. Okay. So you can't, you know, these, like a, a scripture like this, you're twisting it and that's, you're equating it with the full moon when you don't understand when the full moon is supposed to come. All right. So, um, First, let's get Sirach and also just want to bring this up. So, <clears throat> you know, because some people <clears throat> keep the new moon, you know, like it's the dark moon, but also you have when Enoch, you know, Enoch calendar where the, the moon starts, you see how it's on the 13th right here and A lot of times um, you had, when you do the history, uh, you had Israelites that would spot the moon and they would look and see, okay, well, the, the new moon is coming in. So a little bit of that light, you know, the crescent, they call it the crescent. That's when the new moon, either like the dark moon or this, you know, it wasn't a full, you know, you know moon. That, it wasn't a full big moon that was out that would govern the new moon or the month. Okay, it was it was like this, you know what I'm saying? How I, how I got the cursor pointed. Okay, so yeah, Enoch tells you that, um, and then like I said, when you do the history, all right, it shows you that um, you know the, they looked at the crescent moon. Okay, all right, so for, let's start with uh, you know right here, Sirach, um verse six, Sirach 43 and six, it says, he made the moon also to serve in our season for a declaration of times and a sign of the world. Cause yeah, we, we use the moon to, we know like seasons and things like that. The moon, you know, our forefathers and, you know, other societies back then, you know, even though they were worshiping the moon, but we used it, you know, for our seasons to know, okay, well, just like I said, when the new moon and also, yeah, when the feast day come up, you know, is, we see the moon. All right. So it says from the moon is the sign of feast right here, a light that decreases in her perfection. Okay, so which people don't understand is that from the moon is the sign of feast, a light that decreases uh, in her perfection, because again, the full moon governs these feast days. Okay, a lot of the feast days on the 14th and 15th, which I'm going to show. So from that point on, the light decreases in the moon to the full, uh, to the new moon. Okay, which again, you read Enoch. All right. So, uh, but it says the month is called after her name, increasing, increasing wonderfully in her changing, being an instrument of the armies above, shining in the firmament of heaven. Okay. The month is called after her name. All right. So we know that the month, new moon, it is synonymous. All right. So uh, from there, let's get, uh, get right here. I'll show that, but I also wanted to touch into the Sefer because I was looking at the Sefer and, you know, Psalms 81 and 3, and this is what it says in the Sefer. It says, blow the shofar on the dark new moon today on our, our, our solemn feast. Okay, for this uh, was a statue for Yasha'al 
and a law Elohim of Yaakov. All right, so it says the dark new moon. Okay, so understanding that, you know, because some people equate this with, you know, trumpets, but even, even saying that, you know, that's when the new moon is, and then you drop down to the tenth is the atonement, and then the tabernacles. Again, that's and I'm gonna show that that's when the full moon comes in. So even if this is talking, which I believe is twofold, it could represent trumpets, and it also could be talking because I'm gonna show another thing. You know, showing this, uh, there's a, a separation between the new moon here and the feet of full moon. Okay, so um, but showing you that it could be twofold because also we know numbers ten. You know, we're supposed to blow the trumpet you know, during uh, the new moon, okay? And then also we know that the Trump, Feast of Trumpets is on the first of the seventh month, all right? So I uh, just wanted to point out the dark new moon, all right? So here, let's go into here. So blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed on our solemn feast day, all right? So um, solemn feast day. All right, so let's look at in the time appointed. So we know blow up the trumpet in the new moon. Okay, so what does it say? Full moon. So the time appointed, okay, properly fullness or the full moon, it's festival, time appointed. Okay, so let's go into the, uh, the root word. Okay, because it says the cover covering so yeah you know what i'm saying like covering covering the moon with its light okay and that's and you know there's somebody know oh that's a reach you know you reach it for there but you can clearly see it says full moon and it's not it's a separation and we can see we can see other um we can see other translations Okay, blow the, the ram's horn at the new moon and again at full moon to call a festival Okay, blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon on our feast day. Okay, it's not a saying that the full moon is the new moon. Okay, it's, it's two different things being spoken of. Okay, so, um, you know, so just kind of showing you the, uh, you know, these translations even kind of recognize that. See, look, and like right here, sound the trumpet and start the new moon festival we must also celebrate when the moon is full, okay? All right, so just showing you that separation, man. All right, so um, from there, let's get, uh, so I showed the, the different translations. Okay, so let's get uh, Jubilee. So let's show also that, yeah, the moon or the new moon is the first day of the month. Okay, so it's the new moon, not the full moon. Okay, the full moon comes in the second week, you know, 14, 15, which I'm going to show that, but, you know, I'm jumping the gun. But, okay, so this is uh, Book of Jubilees. Okay, and I'm going to show in the scriptures. So, yeah, oh, if you don't subscribe to Enoch or Jubilees, you know, it's still going to give forth the understanding. All right, so chapter uh, seven, and I'm going to get to the point or I'm gonna get uh, verse one. It says in the seventh week in the first year there, thereof in this Jubilees, Noah planted uh, vines on the mountain on which the ark had rested named uh, Lubar, one of the Ararat mountains. Cause this is uh, speaking of a after uh, the flood and they produced fruit in the fourth year. And he guarded, uh, he guarded their fruit and gathered it in this year in the seventh month. Okay, and what happens in the seventh month? The new, the new moon, the trumpets. Okay, and he he made wine thereof and put it in a vessel and kept it in the fifth year until the first day, on the new moon of the first month. Okay, so in of the new first day of the new moon of the first month. Okay, so which the first that first month would be what a be Passover. All right, but showing you that it says first day of the new uh, the new moon on the of the first month. All right, so showing you that the first day is equated with the new moon. <clears throat> okay, so let's go. Let's further show this. Okay, so um, 
a show when David was, was absent at the new moon. Okay, so it says, verse five, it says, and David said unto Jonathan, behold, tomorrow is the new uh, moon and I shall, okay, and got me saying new month, you know what I'm saying, but new, new moon and I should not fail to sit with the king, uh, sit with the king at meat, but let me go that I may uh, hide myself in the field until the third day at even. So, and right there, you can see that the new month or the new moon, and then he's saying he going to hide to the third day at even. So right there is the, is an answer showing you the first day, and then he's going to, he's going to hide himself to the third day. Okay. Which also cuts, uh, which, you know, that not touching into the lunar Sabbath, but, you know, showing you that you can have a new moon and, and that's the day. And then a few days later is the Sabbath. It's not, you don't have to want uh, the new moon and then count seven days. No. Okay. So, um, and I might do, do a, a extra lesson on that, but that's not the point of the lesson, but it says, then Jonathan said to David, tomorrow is the new moon. Uh, and thou shall be missed because thy seat will uh, be empty. Okay, so again, tomorrow is the new moon. All right, so let's let's drop down to verse 24. All right, just making sure. So David uh, hid himself in the field, and when the new moon was come, the king sat down to eat meat. Okay, and the king sat upon his seat as at other times, even upon a seat by the wall, and Jonathan arose, and Abner sat by Saul's side, and David's place was empty. Nevertheless, Saul spake not anything that day, for he thought something uh, had befallen him. He is not clean. Surely he is not clean. So yeah, Saul was thinking David was not clean. That's why he didn't show up. Okay, so, um, and, it and it came to pass on the morrow which was the second day of the month. Okay, so if you wanna, oh yeah, I don't believe in Jubilees. Okay, so here we see that the second day of the month, okay, which was the new moon just passed, and it's the second day of the month, that David's place was empty, and Saul uh, said unto Jonathan his son, wherefore cometh not the son of Jesse to meet neither yesterday nor today. Okay, so just showing, um, you know, just showing that right there. Okay, so just showing you that the new moon is the first day. Okay, so yeah, we we can we going over this to bring it home. Okay, because some yeah people thinking that this is the full moon that is being spoken of, but I'm gonna show that it's not. All right, so um, okay, so yeah, back going back to what I was saying at Psalms 81. Okay, some people thinking that's the that's the Feast of Trumpets, which, like I said, it could be twofold. Um, but let me read this. It says, Numbers uh, 21 and 29 and 1, it says, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, ye shall have a holy convocation. Ye shall do no silver our work. It is a day of blowing the trumpets unto you. Okay, so what, what comes after that, you know, in the seventh month? We know it's the atonement, all right? Okay, so we know the atonement. Uh, you know, comes after that. Okay, so we see right here, also on the 10th, uh, 23 and 27, Leviticus. Also on the 10th day of this seventh month, there shall be a atonement. It shall be a holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Most High. Okay, so that's on the 10th day, of the, the seventh month. Now dropping down to verse 34, it says, speak unto the children of Israel, saying the 15th day of this seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days unto the most high. Okay, so on the 15th, okay, and earlier, now if you twisting this around and you talking about this is talking about the new moon, then, but it says from, from the moon is the sign of feast. Okay, so, and we, we established that, you know, the new moon and the full moon uh, were separate. Okay, and we, yeah, like even even right here, uh, which one was it? 
Yeah, so sound the, sound the trumpets and start the new moon festival. We must also celebrate when the moon is full. Okay, so, you know, like I said, have a lot of these showing you that it's a separation. Okay, so, um, All right, so let's show, so Tabernacle, this is first Ezra's five and 51. Just looking at my notes. All right, so it says 51, it says also they held the Feast of Tabernacles as, as it is commanded in the law and offered sacrifices daily as was meat. And after that, the continual oblation and the sacrifice of the Sabbaths and of the new moons and of all holy feasts. Okay, I'm showing you the separation of the new moons and of all holy feasts. Okay, and all they that had made any vow to the Most High began to, sac began to offer sacrifices to the Most High from the first day of the seventh month. Okay, so from the first day of the seventh month, okay, although the temple of the Most High was not built yet. Okay, so the first day of the seventh month. Okay, so, um, okay, so the, so the first day of this, the seventh month. Okay, so uh, dropping down. Kind of 57. All right. So, okay, it says, and they laid foundation of the house of the Most High in the first day of the second month in the second year after they were come to Jewry and Jerusalem. And they appointed the Levites from 20 years old and over the works of the Most High. Then stood up Yahushua and his sons and brethren and Kem uh, Meal, his brother and the sons of Medith Abun, with the, the sons of Joda, the son of Eladun, with their sons and brethren, all Levites with one accord, setters forward of the business, laboring to uh, advance the works in the house of the Most High. So the workmen built the temple of the Most High. And the priests stood array in their vestments with musical instruments and trumpets. I, I wanted to bring this out because we know that we just read that the Feast of Trumpets, okay, uh, we keep, we, we have trumpets, but this is the first day of the second month. Okay, so, and this, this was during the time of um, Tabernacles. Okay, so uh, right here, when we, when we read up here and it was talking about the first, first day of the seven uh seventh month okay so even though yeah we drop we we go it's on the 15th okay so and then right here showing you yeah first uh first day of the second month okay and it says and the priest stood array in their vestments with musical instruments and trumpets okay because yeah numbers 10 and 10 Also in the day of your gladness and your solemn feast days and in the beginning of your months, he shall blow with the trumpets over the burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings. So that they may be un, uh, be to you a memorial before the most high, I'm the most high of power. So showing you that, yeah, every month, yeah, we had, you know, blowing the trumpet. So that's why I'm going back to it's twofold as far as Psalms 81. Okay, because we blew the trumpet every month. Okay, every every our twelve months, you know, we we blew the trumpet. Okay, so um, okay, which now is the, is the twelve month uh, that we're in, you know, right now. Okay, so the the month of Purim, all right, which the fourteenth and the fifteenth uh, is when the new moon comes or when the full moon comes in. Okay, so not it doesn't govern. We just establishing that. The full, the new moon does not govern, uh, or the full moon does not govern the new, the new month. The new moon or the crescent moon, the dark moon, governs 
the new month. Okay, you know, to, to make it make sense. Okay, but yeah, like I said, people might scoff. So let's continue. All right, so let me just finish up the, the scriptorial aspect. All right, so second, uh, this is second Chronicles 31 and three. It says he appointed also the king's portion of his sus substance for the burnt offerings to wit for the morning and evening uh, burnt offerings and the burnt offerings for the Sabbaths and for the new moons and for the set feast as it is written in the law of the Most High. So just again, showing you the new moons and the feast, a, a separation. All right. Okay. Similar to yeah, uh, Psalms 81 and three. Okay, so we know Exodus, um, matter of fact, let's just get this, Exodus uh, 12, so Exodus 12 and 18, it says, in the first month on the 14th day of the month at even, ye shall eat unleavened bread until the uh, one and 20th day of the month at even. Okay, which again, even brothers have that wrong. The first the first day of Passover is its own day. Then the Feast of Unleavened Bread is on the 15th for seven days, is, which is basically a total of eight days. It doesn't start Passover, then you count seven days. Okay, it would be short. But the point here showing you that Passover starts on the 14th. All right, so setting it up for you know what i'm about to bring out so okay so in the 12th month that is a dar you know we, we saying that okay so we see that perim okay so we see that perim not esther 9 and 21 it says to establish this among men on uh, them that they should keep the 14th day <clears throat> A lot. to establish them, this among them that they should keep the 14th day of the month adar and the 15th day of the same year yearly okay mm -hmm. so keeping the perim on the 14th and the 15th okay so let's uh let's show this all right okay because like i said so if the full moon is the go governing of the month then it would be contrary to what what we're about to read right now. But even like I said, we showed that the first, the new moon is the first day of the month. And yeah, it was separate from the full moon. So you can't say that the new moon is full. And then it, it says that we're supposed to blow the trumpet in the full moon as well on the feast day. Okay, so that you can't, it's contrary. Okay, so it could either it can only be one. So you can't have the full moon and then the dark moon is supposedly the full moon that sets the feast day because you're saying that the full moon is starts the month. Like these, these guys got, you know, Israel confused. You know what I'm saying? So I mean it's it's crazy. All right. So let let me start with uh right here. So this is Philo, page uh three thirteen. Okay, and I'm gonna just get to the point. All right, so it says, uh, right right here it says, which are, let me see. Uh, okay, it says on the 15th, or actually, no, this is not it. Okay, it says, for it, for it is said in, in the scriptures on the 10th day of this month, let each of them take a sheep according to his house in order that, from the tenth, they may be consecrated to the tenth. Uh, that is, uh, to the Most High, the sacrifices have been preserved. Okay, so this uh, this was talking about Passover. Okay, so uh, going to page, continuing on, it says, "And the soul which is illuminated in two portions." out of three until it is entirely changed in every part and becomes a heavenly brilliancy like a full moon at the height of its increase at the end of the second week. So a full moon comes in at the end of the second week. Okay, so that's the point I wanted to get there, but we, yeah, let's get more, let's get more. 
All right, so in the end of the second week, we know seven, seven plus seven is 14, period. <laughs> All right, so yeah, it was seven days. Okay, the first week starts the new moon, seven days, not the full moon yet. That next week, bam, there's the full moon, and bam, what happens? The 14th, the 15th are our feast days, okay? P primarily Passover, Purim, Feast of Tabernacles. So let's get that. All right, so... Let's go to Philo, uh, still in Philo. This is page, uh, it's page uh, 551 and um, 189. Okay, so I just wanted to crop the, the parts that I was getting. It says on the 15th day at full moon. Okay, on the 15th day at full moon. Okay, so these are our, again, this is history. Our forefathers went by. Like I said, I already touched it into the scripture. So men can't be like, they don't subscribe to, yeah, like I said, Jubilees, Enoch, Josephus, you know, Philo, you know what I'm saying? You know, because they bringing out other false sources, but it's saying what it's saying. So if you're claiming to be in the truth or Israel, you're, you know, claiming to be in the truth, basically, and you're an Israelite, you should know that yeah, we were going by, you know, what our forefathers, they have the records, okay, and things like that, but like I said, I showed it in, in throughout the scriptures, okay, so it, it can't be uh, taken any, any way else, you know what I'm saying, so it says on the 15th day at full moon, the feast, which is called the Feast of Booths, or what, the Feast of Tabernacles, it is celebrated for which the su supplies of the sacrifices are more numerous, okay, so Feast of Booths, that's what it's talking about, Feast of Tabernacles. All right, so let's get, uh, let's get this. So this is, uh, again, this is Philo. This is talking about Passover, okay, and unleavened bread. All right, so it says, after the, uh, the feast of the new moon comes the fourth festival. So it says, after the feast of the new moon comes the fourth festival, that of the Passover, which the Hebrews call Passat, on which the whole people offer sacrifices beginning at noonday and continuing till evening. Okay, so on the feast of new moon comes the fourth festival. So we know by scripture, when, the, when does the Passover come in? On the 14th. And the 15th is the unleavened bread. Okay, so let's, let's, you know, let's put the pieces together. Okay, dropping down to 155. It says, and this feast is begun on the 15th day of the month, in the middle of the month, on the day on which the moon is full of light. Okay, so in con uh, consequence of the providence of the Most High taking care that there shall be no darkness on that day. Okay, and again, the feast is celebrated for seven days. Okay, so that's talking about the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So like I said, if you, if you have Philo, it's page 582 if you want to verify, you know what I'm saying? But it's saying what it's saying, okay? Because we, I mean, throughout this lesson showed, yeah, we, like I said, we know that the, the uh, Feast of Unleavened Bread comes in on the 15th, all right? You can read Le Leviticus 23 and 5 through 7. All right, but that's that's a cut, you know what I'm saying? So this is just, you should not be going against this. Okay, so the new moon, like I said earlier, dark moon, crescent moon, that starts the, the new month, okay? Not the full moon, all right? So let's get Josephus now, all right? So page 95, okay? start at 238 it says at the new moon they both perform the daily sacrifices and slay two bulls with seven lambs of the first year and a kid of the goats okay and it says also for the expiration of sins that is if they have sinned through ignorance but on the seventh month which the macedonians call hyper be it, uh hyper they make a a Ad, uh, addition to those already mentioned and sacrifice a bull and ram and seven lambs and a kid of the goats for sin. So um, this is the seventh month, okay, which is tabernacles, okay, the new month, the new moon. Uh, uh, so like uh, trumpets, which is the new moon, 
Okay, but look at this. It says 240. On the 10th day of the same lunar month, they fast till the evening. So that is our atonement. And that's also a cut from men saying that we, we don't have to fast, you know, twisting Isaiah uh, 58 around. Okay, so which I'm, I'm going to deal with, deal with that when, um, you know, atonement comes. But, you know, uh, it says we fast from, till evening. Okay, so and then what was after this on the 15th tabernacles? Okay, the seven month tabernacles. Okay, so we just got Philo that said that the moon is light on the 15th of tabernacles. All right, so yeah, you just you got to put the pieces together. All right, so the last source I'm gonna get. Is, okay, so this was the last source. Uh, this is just further confirming about the Passover and unleavened bread uh, from Philo. All right, so it says um, right here, it says this feast of unleavened bread begins on the 15th Nisan, okay? And again, begins on the 15th. So not, even though we eat unleavened bread all eight days, because uh, like I said, we eat, uh, we don't eat leaven on the 14th. We're past, we eat leaven, unleavened as well on the 14th. It says the day that divides the month and on which the moon arrives at the full Okay, so the middle of the, the month, okay, not the beginning, in order that on that day there may be no darkness at all, which we just we just read. The 15th Nisan then, which began at sunset of the day on which uh, the Paschal, Paschal uh, sacrifices were killed and in the even of which the Paschal, Paschal Supper was eaten uh, was that day reckoned from sunset to sunset on which the moon arrived at the full and for the re reason assigned by philo of uh, is that there uh, might be no darkness okay so um you know that's that was pretty much uh the point As a matter of fact i'll drop down it says moses writes that the first month should be begin with the viral equinox and in that month on the 14th day when the moon's orb is just about to be full the passover a notable festival called in chaldea uh, pasak is celebrated okay so that that's it you know that's it you know that's a cut you know that's that's you know what i'm saying i can't get around that okay so the 14th day is when the full moon comes in point blank period all right so you know that's been the lesson you know, I hope brothers and sisters was edified. You know, I just wanted to smash this, this doctrine, you know, quick, quick to the point, you know, iron shopper and iron. Like I said, brothers, brothers, you know, want to be proud and admit that it's, it's not what it is saying, then, you know, be my guest. But the sources are there, the scriptures were there, you know, you know, that's, that's what it ha has to be done. You got to hold that L. All right, so, um, you know, <laughs> I mean, that, it is what it is, but, you know, I hope brothers and sisters was edified to the next time. Shalom.